Have you ever worked on a project that really needed to eke out one or two additional stories in order to make the finances work, but you couldn't do so because of building height restrictions or limitations? Could the use of mass timber potentially reduce the overall building height while keeping the same number of stories or even potentially adding an additional story? If these topics are of interest to you, stick around because today's video is going to focus on them. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. The fundamental height of a building is directly correlated to the floor to floor height and the number of stories. Now, oftentimes we're trying to hit several targets at the same time. That is either number of stories that the building code allows for a certain construction type, certain occupancy group, overall building height measured in feet from grade to the roof, and sometimes a combination of those, especially if we're including a podium in the structure. Now, Mass Timber has a lot of potential benefits associated with its use, but I think one of the areas that sometimes is overlooked is the potential reduction in building height. Now, because Mass Timber has a relatively thin floor and roof structure depth, it does have the potential to either increase the floor to floor height and therefore the overall building height, or conversely, increase the ceiling height headroom allowable while keeping the same overall building height when comparing a mass timber system to other structural building material systems. Now much of the benefit here centers around the fact that mass timber as a floor assembly or a roof assembly has potentially a much thinner structure profile when compared to other structural building systems as part of floor and roof assemblies. Now to give you some specific examples, let's say we're talking about a mass timber floor assembly in a multifamily building. Now most often that mass timber floor assembly is going to be exposed from the ceiling side. You'll have likely a three or five ply mass timber floor panel, which usually has a thickness in the range of four to seven inches approximately. On top of that mass timber floor panel will be usually an acoustic mat, several inches of concrete or gypsum based topping layer, and then potentially a finished floor. So that's gonna give you an overall structure thickness of in the range of say eight to 11 inches thick. And that is the entirety of the floor structure thickness. Now again, in this multifamily application, it is usually most beneficial to span that assembly from unit demising wall to unit demising wall, either using those as bearing walls or aligning structural beams over the tops of those unit demising walls. So in that case, there is no additional structure within the space of that multifamily dwelling unit. So your floor to floor height is measured from the top side of the finished floor below to the top side of the finished floor above. And your ceiling height, your headroom is really just that floor to floor height minus about 10 inches. With mass timber floor assemblies, as we said, we usually want to leave that exposed on the ceiling side. So there is no drop ceiling. There is no additional finish below the mass timber. So what this means is a lot of cases, mass timber multifamily projects have floor to floor heights that are relatively shallow, talking in the range of nine foot four, nine foot eight, maybe 10 feet floor to floor. Whereas a, a traditional built multifamily project, regardless of what other structural materials are being used, often has floor to floor heights in excess of 10 feet, 10 foot eight inches, uh, maybe even 11 feet, for example. And that's still providing you with the same clear ceiling height to the underside of the ceiling surface, again, because other structural assemblies will most likely have a drop ceiling. With mass timber, you don't have that. So you're potentially looking at saving 10 inches, 12 inches, maybe 14 inches of structure slash ceiling depth with a mass timber floor assembly relative to other structural floor assemblies. Multiply that over a four, five, six story project. Now you're talking about potentially reducing the overall building height by four feet, five feet, maybe even six feet. Now this overall reduction in building height has quite a few different potential benefits. One of which is just tied to the fact that you may be restricted to a certain overall building height. Maybe this is just based on the limitations of the International Building Code. If you're say doing a type 3A project, that's gonna say you have a maximum building height of 85 feet measured from average grade plane to the average roof height. So if you are trying to fit an additional story on that project, 
limiting the floor to floor height of those five stories in this case of mass timber construction, maybe that allows you to do three stories of a podium rather than two or something configuration wise like that that benefits the overall project. Again, increasing the value of the project while keeping within those limitations, in this case of the building code. Maybe it's not a building code restriction. Maybe it's a local zoning regulation where you're needing to limit the overall building height to something less, whether it's 65, 70, 75 feet. Some projects have benefited from this lower overall building height because of the fact that they were in the flight path. They were in a nearby zone to an airport. So limiting the overall building height was beneficial there. Other mass timber projects have also benefited from this reduction in building height because of the neighborhoods that they were built in. You know, maybe you're doing a project in a neighborhood that has a lot of one and two family dwellings. And so your project, maybe it's a three or four story mass timber multifamily project, but by limiting the floor to floor height and therefore the overall building height, allows it to kind of blend into the vernacular of the surrounding projects and generate better buy-in from those neighbors when it comes to local approvals. Of course, the potential cost savings associated with a thinner structure depth and therefore a thinner floor to floor height and therefore a thinner overall building height really can come into play in a number of different ways when looking at reducing the overall cost of the building. Of course, now we're talking about potentially reducing the area of the exterior enclosure. So how much are you saving in the reductions in siding, in facades? How much are you saving in exterior curtain wall systems if you're using those, in exterior studs, insulation, weather resistive barriers? What about in the interior? What are you saving in interior partitions and the finishes associated with those? What are you saving in vertical plumbing lines, vertical HVAC systems that are running through the building? Because now potentially all of those systems are four or five, six feet shorter than they were. So the cost savings really multiply in a number of cases. Also an overall shorter building potentially is a lighter building. You just simply don't have as much mass because of the reduction of all of these interior and exterior wall surfaces. So on a site that has really poor soils, that again has the potential to reduce the weight of the building, which is gonna impact potentially the foundation systems, the need for the severity of say driven piles on the project or some other type of soil remediation. So in closing, as it often comes down to with mass timber projects, it really does need to go beyond just what is the cost of the structure per square foot. It's what is the use of mass timber benefiting you in terms of these other potential savings like we've talked about today. And in most of today's examples, I did talk about the reductions in overall building height, but it could be the opposite is true. Maybe your project doesn't have this limitation on overall building height, but instead you're gaining the benefit of increased head height, taller ceilings, where maybe you're keeping your floor to floor height and overall building height the same as you would have that be in a project using other structural building materials. But in this case, now instead of a nine foot clear to ceiling, you have a nine foot 10 clear to ceiling or something like that. So that's gonna allow your project to stand out from competitors in your marketplace, provide market distinction and be able to better market that project, whether again, it's a multifamily project, an office project, et cetera, to potential tenants and clients and show them that your project has a potential value or benefit that others in the marketplace don't have. So again, it's balancing this cost versus value and understanding the different ways in which mass timber can add value to your specific project. Well, that's all for today's video. I thank you so much for making it to the end. And until next time, we'll see you later.